So we are going to look at uh, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures really quickly and just do one example of how to solve for it, okay? All right, so Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures is actually really easy and uh, it has to do with gases. And basically, all right, he says that the P total, the pressure of my total container, okay, my total system, whatever, is going to be the pressure of my first substance plus the pressure of my second substance plus the pressure of my third gas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you just add them all up. Because in general, basically, what he's saying is if you had a container and you have a bunch of different gases, you know, zooming around in there, they basically don't interact with each other, these gases, okay? If, assuming you have gases that don't interact, okay? That's, that's the big assumption that we're making with Dalton's partial pressure, okay? Is that these gases aren't like colliding and exploding or reacting with each other, okay? You're assuming that they're stable in the system. Um, and the gases are not interacting with each other, so they're just, you know, zinging around in the container itself. So if I'm trying to figure out my total pressure in this container, I can figure out the pressure of my first gas, or the blue gas, the pressure of the purple gas, and the pressure of the green gas, and add them all up. Okay, or alternatively, I could have what my total pressure is, and I can try and figure out exactly how much pressure one gas is exerting on it by subtracting out everything else. Okay, um, that's, that's the main idea, so pretty easy. And this applies when we do our um, experiment 12, okay, when we generated hydrogen gas, because <laughs> I'm going to draw you a picture. It's going to be brutal. I apologize. Okay, so here we go. All right, here is our beaker, and here is our little magnesium copper ball, and here is our graduated cylinder. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Right, there's the right our upside down graduated cylinder. That's the base of the graduated cylinder, right? It's upside down. I'm sorry. Okay, this is, we're not 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 the best of drawers, but you get the idea. Okay, and then when the magnesium um, metal reacted with the hydrochloric acid that we put in there, we had some hydrogen gas form. Right? Hooray! And then you measure the volume of the hydrogen gas you collected. However, okay, whatever gas is in there, it's not just hydrogen gas. You also had some water vapor in this graduated cylinder, okay? There's a lot of reasons for why water actually makes water vapor and doesn't just stay as a liquid. We will talk about that soon, I promise, okay? But for now, just trust me, uh, there, there is some water vapor in there. So when we took our measurement from the barometer, Okay, that, was, that would have been the total pressure. So I need to figure out the partial pressure. I need to subtract out my water vapor pressure that's in there, okay? So, um, oh, I do, okay. So here we go. There's actually a page in your lab, page 122, okay? And the only thing it does is list for you a, a vapor pressure of water uh, table. Okay, so it says at whatever temperature, which is why we measure the temperature. Okay, so at whichever temperature it is, it tells you what the pressure in MMHG your uh, water vapor is going to be. So for the example for our lab, right, we have P total, the pressure of our total gas up here that we created is going to be the pressure of the hydrogen gas that was produced from our reaction and the pressure of our water vapor that's in there, okay? So I have my P total from the barometer, okay? From the barometer. And I have my pressure of water from the table on page 122, okay? Now, what I need to do is solve for the pressure of my hydrogen gas that I produced, okay? So from my barometer, we had 779 mmHg, okay? 
uh, equals, so that's my total, right, equals the pressure of my hydrogen plus the pressure of my water. Well, um, it was 27 degrees when we took our measurements, so you take your table, you find 27 degrees, and you see, aha, water vapor pressure is going to be 26.7 mmHg. <laughs> okay, we're running out of space. All right, so now to solve for the pressure of your hydrogen, you just subtract 26.7. from both sides, and you will get the partial pressure of the hydrogen. So you're solving for the actual pressure of the hydrogen gas you created. Assuming I did math in my head correctly, which is never uh, <laughs> never reliable, so double check your calculator, all right? But you just subtract, and you should get your partial pressure for hydrogen, okay, 752.3, instead of 779. So if you were doing your uh, your calculations and you are using 779 as your pressure for hydrogen you're gonna get some really weird answers for your like percent yield for how much product you should have made okay because you're using the wrong value of your um, of your pressure okay so make sure you're using the correct value for your pressure